welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Does your furry friend turn into quite a reluctant passenger when you go to take them for a car ride? Buckle up, we're about to discuss motion sickness and more importantly what you can do to make car rides easier for your animal. Join me, I hope you'll learn something today. Making sure that your dog or cat is comfortable in the car and can do car rides is incredibly important. I think about all of the need to go to vet clinics, of course, and we need to be working on socialization with our pets. That often involves things like puppy classes, and if they are uncomfortable, unable to handle a car ride, this can make things quite challenging for the people and for the animal. I most commonly see patients experiencing motion sickness when they are, you know, a few months old and a significant number of them will grow out of it by the time they are about a year of age. The most commonly accepted theory for this is that their inner ear is developing during this time period and that makes them more susceptible to motion sickness. Once they are adults and the inner ear is formed, then they might be less susceptible to feelings of motion sickness. There are going to be some patients who might have an inner ear problem, have an ear infection, they might be on medications or have other diseases that predispose them to feeling nauseated. In all of those cases, motion sickness could be more likely to occur for your cat or dog. There are a number of symptoms that can be noted for dogs and cats that are experiencing motion sickness. I will hear from people things like they used to not mind going into the car, but now they really don't want to go. Some might do whining, vocalizing, barking, meowing, crying, screaming. They might do pacing. They might drool. They might look depressed or lethargic. They might not want to get out of the vehicle for a while once you've finally stopped it. They might vomit. They might have diarrhea. They might not want to interact with toys or with you could be a combination of all of the above. There are a few things that we can do to make car rides more comfortable in general for our pets. This involves properly desensitizing and counter conditioning them to whatever you are going to be using to keep them safe in their vehicle. I did do a video before about how to travel as safely as possible with your pets. You need to get them used to spending time in that kennel or harness before even adding in the part about the car. That said, all of the behavior modification efforts in the world will not treat motion sickness. And so if you are working with a strictly positive reinforcement trainer, trying to help your pet feel more comfortable in the car, and you're just not making progress, it's crucial to rule out motion sickness before doing anything else. Also, it can help them to be more comfortable to keep the vehicle a bit on the cool side. Being hot can make motion sickness feelings worse for some pets. We can also use calming music like playing through a dog's ear or some calming classical music. Those sorts of things can also be helpful and soothing for our pets. However, for most patients that experience motion sickness, appropriate prescription medications are an absolute must. The only medication that is shown to help with motion sickness is a medication called Serenia. Now it's important to note a few things when we're using Serenia for motion sickness. It needs to be dosed much higher than it's dosed for other episodes of acute vomiting. There are also instructions that the company gives about when to feed your pet and when to give the medication and how long that should occur before you start getting them into the car. Now at this higher dose, Serenia can only be used for two days in a row and then your animal needs a break from it. I also want to address here that some pets will develop a secondary stress response because they associate getting in the car with feeling so sick and miserable, which makes a ton of sense. It's very important that you seek professional help as soon as you notice that your pet might be experiencing motion sickness. Ruling that in or out first is absolutely crucial so that we don't cause secondary fear and distress from being in the vehicle. Then we often need to add in things to help them reduce their situational fear or distress. Over-the-counter using Zilkeen or Adaptil 
or common recommendations. Sometimes we even need to use prescription medications to help reduce situational stress. Trazodone is commonly used for this purpose, but there are many others that you can discuss with your veterinarian as well. I want to emphasize here, these do not address motion sickness. The bottom line is that you should not forget about treating motion sickness or thinking about the possibility of motion sickness being involved in how your pet feels when they are traveling. There are some pets who do not outgrow motion sickness and there are going to be pets that just need to stay home more and that need you to be more creative with very near to home enrichment. Only once motion sickness has been ruled in or out should you then consider working with a positive reinforcement trainer to help you with dealing with fear or anxiety of being in a car. It can be very scary for them, you know, having all of the noises and all of the sights that are rushing by. It can be quite overwhelming for our pets and we need to remember that as well. If you have a topic that you'd like me to cover in the future, do not hesitate to suggest it down below. I love to read your comments and interact with everyone in the comment section. That's part of why I highlight a new comment each week because I read every single one of them. I hope that your weekend is a fantastic one and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye!